Okay, so we're starting a unit on triangles, and we're going to talk about classifying triangles and how angles relate within a triangle. So the first thing we have to do is get some angle vocabulary. So we're going to classify angles by their measure. Okay, so we have four types of angles here. We have acute, <clears throat> we have right, we have obtuse, and we have straight. Okay, so an acute angle is one whose measure is between 0 and 90 degrees. So it's going to be a small little angle. <clears throat> a right angle is one whose measure is exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle, so a larger angle, obtuse angle, is one whose measure is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And finally, a straight angle, um, which looks kind of like a line, <clears throat> is an angle whose measure is exactly 180 degrees. So measures by the protractor postulate can run between 0 and 180. Acute is between 0 and 90. A straight or right angle is at 90. Obtuse is between 90 and 180. A straight angle is at 180. <coughs> okay, so now that we have angle vocabulary, we can classify triangles. by their angles. And we're going to have three types of triangles here. We can have an acute triangle, we can have a right triangle, and we can have an obtuse triangle. Okay, so acute triangles have three angles where all three angles are acute angles. So all three angles have to be less than 90 degrees, so all three angles are acute angles. In a right triangle, you have one right angle. So you have two acute angles, but you have one right angle. <clears throat> And finally, in an obtuse triangle, you have one angle that is obtuse. So you have one obtuse angle and two acute angles. Okay, another last little bit that can be used when we're classifying triangles by angles is we can say that a triangle is equiangular. And an equiangular triangle is a triangle that has all three angles are congruent. So it is going to be an acute triangle. So all three angles are congruent. So they're all the same size. So that's what the equi part is, angular. So there are three equal angles. We can call it equiangular. Okay, so acute three angles that are all acute. A right triangle has one right angle. An obtuse has one obtuse angle. And an equiangular triangle has three angles that are all congruent. Okay, we can also classify triangles by their sides. So what we get from this is we get what are called scalene triangles. We get isosceles triangles and we get equilateral or equilateral triangles. So scalene, isosceles, equilateral. So a scalene triangle is a triangle which has three non-congruent sides. So all three sides are different. 
So this side is a different length, and this side is a different length from this side. So that would give me a scalene triangle. An isosceles triangle, however, must have two sides that are the same length. So it has to have at least two congruent sides. At least. Now, it can have three congruent sides and still be isosceles. But it has to have at least two. Iso means same. Okay, so we have iso, same size. Okay, isosceles triangle. Equilateral means that the three sides, lateral meaning side, are all equal. So an equilateral triangle, all three sides are congruent. Okay, <clears throat> so note, this is at least over here. This means that equilateral triangles are all isosceles because they have at least two congruent sides means they're isosceles, but with the third congruent side makes it equilateral. So all equilateral triangles, so we can literally say equilateral triangles are a subset of isosceles. So like all equilateral triangles are isosceles, but not all isosceles triangles are equilateral. Okay, so we've got triangles by angles, acute, obtuse, right, and um, equiangular. Triangles by sides, scalene, isosceles, equilateral. Okay, so we're going to get a couple of big ideas here. We have a thing that we're going to call the triangle angle sum theorem. Okay, and this simply states the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees okay so that means that if i have a triangle of any type and this is angle one and this is angle two and this is angle three then the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three have to equal 180. now believe it or not you proved this on your last test if you look back on your last assessment the proof for this was part of that assessment so, I challenge you to go back and look at that assessment and see how that proof works. It uses Euclid's parallel postulates. It forms a couple other angles here. But take a look back and see how that proof works. So, if you know, one thing that we do know is that the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to get a weird word here, and this word is corollary. Okay. So a corollary is a accepted statement that follows directly from a theorem without any additional proof. And we actually get like boom, 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 four corollaries that come directly after the triangle angle sum theorem. So one of them says, if you know that two angles in one triangle are congruent to two angles in another then the third angles must also be congruent okay so why is this so let's say I have two triangles right so there's one there's two I know this guy is congruent to this guy I know this guy is congruent to this guy now what about this one and this one well see they both have to add up to 180 so if I take whatever measure this is away from 180 and do the same here and take whatever measure this is from 180 and do the same here and then whatever this is and whatever that is have to be equal which means those two angles will necessarily be congruent because <clears throat> I took away the same amount from 180 in both triangles leaving those congruent so this is a corollary it directly follows from the triangle angle sum theorem all right so there's one I said there's four 
All right, so second corollary. All angles of an equilateral triangle, or equiangular, sorry, equiangular triangle must be 60 degrees. Why is that? Because the three angles all have to be equal. They all add up to 180, so 3 times the measure of the angle has to equal 180, which the measure of each angle then has to be 60. Okay, <clears throat> so that's how that one works. The next corollary out of the four <clears throat> is, again, something that we don't have to prove. Um, if I have a right, tri or if I have a triangle, if I have a right, let's try that a different way. Um, a triangle can have at most one right or one obtuse angle. Well, why is this? Well, because imagine it's not true. Okay, so if it has two right angles, then the two right angles are both 180, or sorry, are both 90. That's a total of 180. There's nothing left for the third angle. Same with obtuse. Like if I have two obtuse angles, these are both more than 90, which means their sum is more than 180, then there's no way for those two to touch each other, so I can't have a triangle. So I can have at most one right or one obtuse angle in a triangle. Can't have more than that. All right, so the last corollary here of the four is that if I have a right triangle, right, then the other two acute angles must be complementary. Okay, so angle one and angle two, we're saying that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to equal 90. Well, if the whole triangle is 180 and the right angle is 90, then of course the other two must add up to 90, which makes them complementary. All right, so nothing too far-fetched there. Okay, so we have one more concept here, which is what we're going to call the remote interior angles theorem. Okay, so this theorem says, like, I have a triangle, and I'm going to give it a tail. Okay, and this is what we're going to call an exterior angle. These are going to be the remote interior angles from that exterior angle. This theorem says that the sum of the remote interior angles measurements is equal to, to, to the measurement of the exterior angle. Okay, so we're going to try to prove this theorem. All right, so let's start here. Let's say I have a triangle with a tail, right? We're going to call this angle one. We're going to call that angle two. We're going to call that angle three. We're going to call that angle four, right? So all that I'm given is that this triangle ABC is a triangle. I'm given that I have triangle ABC and nothing more, okay? What I want to prove is that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 has to equal the measure of angle 4. So let's build our table here. There's statements and oops, and reasons. Okay, so right off the bat, I know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 have to equal 180. 
right? And this is by this triangle angle sum theorem that we just stated, that the three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, I also know that three and four form a line. So the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four has to also equal 180. That's by the angle addition postulate. So we've used that before, right? So if these are both equal to 180, then they're equal to each other. The measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three has to equal the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. They're both equal to 180, which means they're equal to each other. That's substitution. All right, so we substituted this for the 180 because it's equal to 180. You can take the 180 out here, put that in. Now, lo and behold, both sides of the equation have a measure of angle 3. So if I get rid of that on both sides by subtraction, I'm left with the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 4. That's subtraction. Okay, which is exactly what I'm trying to prove. So we have proven the remote interiors angles theorem. All right, so this is good stuff. All right, so let's do some recapping. Okay, to recap, uh, classifying triangles by angle, you have acute, right, obtuse, and then equiangular. Uh, classifying them by sides, you have scalene, isosceles, uh, and equilateral. We have that the sum of the angles of a triangle, one, two, three, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three have to equal 180. We got four corollaries from this, right? So four immediate results coming from this. One is that um, if I know that the two angles of one triangle are congruent to the two angles of another triangle, then I know that the third angles are also congruent. I know that if I have an equilateral triangle, or equiangular triangle actually, all the measures of the angles are 60. I know that I can have at most one right or one obtuse angle in a triangle. And finally, I know that if I have a right triangle, the other two angles are complementary, right? The sum of them has to be 90. Finally, we got this idea that if I have a triangle with a tail, and this is angle one, and this is angle two, and I call this angle four, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two has to equal the measure of angle four, and this is this remote interior angles theorem. All right, so that's it for this one. We'll see what we can do with this all.